Caleb Beams, KTRE News out of Lufkin. Hey guys, um, all of y'all, I know you're excited to be here, but Ty, being in your hometown, what's it finally like being here? Uh, you know, it's just nothing but love. I'm just glad to play in front of my, fa my family and my friends and my brothers. All right, guys, uh, following up on that, just you're finally here on this stage. I know it's been a goal all year to get there, and it was kind of iffy during the middle of conference play with those four losses. But now that you're here, what are you expecting to show the nation? Um, I guess we can start with um, any of them, but let's start with TJ. You know, what do you all expect to prove to the nation here? All right. Um, I feel like we play our best basketball um, on the bigger stages. So we had our ups and downs during our conference, but I feel like we can play, we can show everyone um, how SFA basketball should be played. So um, I feel the same way. I feel like we've been looking forward to this all season. That's what we've been working hard for. So we just decided to be out there. The same as my two teammates. I feel like when the stage is bigger, we play, we play up the competition rather than kind of playing down to our competition when there's not really no one in the, in the crowd watching us play. But I, f I feel like we're prepared for it, and it's a big stage, and we just can't wait to get out there and show the world. I mean, they said, you know, well prepared, just ready to get out there and show what we can do. Same thing, just ready to play. Wendell Barnhouse from The Athletic. Uh, TJ, you said FSA, SFA basketball. Explain what you think that means or what does that mean to people that haven't seen you guys play. Explain basketball the way you guys play it. Uh, disruption, um, pressuring the ball. Uh, we're, we consider ourselves a defensive team, uh, forcing turnovers, pressuring on ball defense, help defense. Um, that's SFA basketball. Josh Peter with USA Today. Um, for any of the players, pop quiz, what does the F stand for in Stephen F. Austin? Stands for fun. <laughs> Dang, that's bad. <laughs> we'll know after this. Guys, when y'all can play y'all style basketball, we've seen y'all put up close to 80 points in some games. And it seems like when you get slowed down, like you did in the conference championship, it kind of slows your production down. What do y'all have to do out there against Texas Tech to make sure y'all can get those turnovers going like you do with leading the nation and keep that fast pace? Anybody in particular? Um, let's go with Ivan. Okay. Uh, we just got to play our style of basketball, um, get out and run, and uh, play together offensively. And once we do that, the, the points will just start piling up. Leon, Wendell Barnhouse in the uh, athletic, what TJ said about defense. How tough are your guys' practices? Do you guys love, do you guys love defense because you have to or because you do? Man, pr practice is tough. I mean, you, got, you have to come with a different mindset to get through one of our practices. Um, it starts in the summer. I mean, just getting conditioned. Learning where to be on the court. The, we have to be at a certain spot every time. Everybody, everybody moves in a certain pattern, and you just you just have to be tough mentally and physically to, to to get through to get through it and learn it. But once you get it, it's fun. That's what that's that's what makes it fun. You know, we go through all those hard times and practice just for the games, and then we get to finally express it once we get to the game and show everyone what we can do.
Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News, for um, Ivan and for uh, uh, for TJ. I was just curious, ever since that game against West Virginia, almost making the Sweet 16, I mean, a lot of you know teams seated where you are are a little bit under the radar. You guys probably aren't going to be sneaking up on anybody. Everybody remembers that game. What's it been like for you guys since that game and kind of – you know, putting yourselves on the map. Um, Not for anybody, actually. Um, I didn't play in the West Virginia game, but uh, I watched it, and it was uh, it was pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know. Hey, TJ. Oh, uh, I forgot the question. Uh. Yeah, uh, the game definitely put SFA on the map. It was already on the map, but I guess people started respecting the school a little bit more. They heard about the school. Um, it helped bring in recruits. Um, and I don't know. Coach Cox, what's up? <laughs> T.Y. <laughs> I mean, you said it. I mean, you know, this is that was that team. This is a new team, so we're here to create our own legacy. Okay. Ty, again, <clears throat> about the defense. I talked to a coach that played you guys this year, and he said that if you make teams go east-west, like side to side, they're dead. They got to go right at the basket attack real quick. Is that – if you were coaching against Stephen F., would that be your game plan to try to just attack – Quickly, and if you go to the side, you know, to a wing pass, that's when things get hairy for other teams. Most definitely, yes, sir. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, playing against our defense is tough, so you just gotta make, make shots. If you don't make shots, then it's gonna be pretty hard to beat Stephen Foster.
coach, congratulations on a great season, and welcome over to um, Dallas for the NCAA tournament. Your thoughts coming into tomorrow's first round? Well, we're excited to be here. I think our players have earned the right. Obviously, we we had a, a tremendous non-conference schedule, and and uh, kids played tough, and we had a little bumps in the road in the league, but you know we talked all year long about playing well as we, we went through March and at Katy, and, and I think our kids are peaking at the right time, and, and I'm excited for them as, as you know we prepare for this two-game tournament here in Dallas, which to me is a perfect venue for not only our players but our fans. So we know we have an unbelievable mountain to climb in Texas Tech and what a great coaching staff they have. But hopefully I think our kids will try pretty hard tomorrow. Coach David Collier from the ABC of Lubbock, Texas. Coach Beard uh, discussed your relationship and your time throughout the years. Can you look back at some of your memories with him, maybe at a McDonald's stealing Sprite instead of water? Uh, you know, I have amnesia pretty good, so I don't not really referencing, you know, what he's talking about. But I think he would really hate if I, he aired some of my dirty laundry on him uh, through the last 25 years that, that I could throw back at him, but. I think my, my hand just slipped on what lever to push. I didn't hit water. It was uh, uh, it just slipped off the water tab. I think that's what happened. And Sprite accidentally came out into the cup versus water. Um, I don't know if he remembers it exactly like that because I think I threw it in the trash um, versus uh, drinking the Sprite. Everybody that knows me knows I hate Sprite. I'm a, a root beer and iced tea guy. So, you know, I'm not sure how he remembers it, but... You know, Chris and I have spent a lot of time together, and we're great friends, and I have the utmost respect for him. And you guys are really lucky to have a great coach like him. I'm glad he brought that up. What a great guy he is. Okay, on the outside aisle here on the right. Uh, Kyle, Mike Finger from San Antonio Express News. Uh, Chris was also uh, mentioning earlier today about oh. how, how uh, you guys come from – uh, a rank of coaches that not a lot of people talk about uh, from places that people haven't heard of. And he, he said he took kind of a pride in representing those guys. I wonder if you feel kind of the same way. And um, do you think there's any kind of connection there because of your shared background? You know, Chris and I, I, I think both were at one time, and, and, and Jeremy Cox on, on my staff, who's my associate head coach, we were, we were all living in San Antonio when we were trying to figure it out. And, and he was an incarnate word as a GA. And, and Jeremy and I were at UTSA, and and we were all just trying to figure out where we we're going, hoping to make it in life, hoping to make it in this career, and if we could be somebody somewhere, just hang on. And, and then we all three of us go junior college coaching, and just then you you never know, you take a chance. And, and Chris obviously has won everywhere he's been, just like Jeremy has, and and. And I've been blessed, and, and I just think the Lord's blessed all three of us. And we, there's no perfect – I tell the young coaches all the time, there's no perfect way, you know, to, to become a head coach in this level. You have to be blessed. I've been blessed by my athletic director who's leaving me right now. I'm not happy with him at all, um, one bit, because he's leaving. Um, but, um, you know, Chris is – I think he's only had 62 jobs in the 28 years, 25 years he's coached. Um, and one everywhere. He left uh, Tech and came, and we had dinner at, at, at BJ's Brewery. He wanted to learn Bill Self's ball screen continuity. I think it took all the 20 minutes to learn what Coach Self has perfected. And then he went undefeated in his professional basketball career running that because he never run ball screen offense. That's how smart a dude he is. And so, you know, he, he's a special guy and a special coach. and, and um, he can do anything. He's, a, you know, he's a magician as a basketball coach. So, you know, you can imagine how excited I am that we get to play them. Kyle Wendell Barnhouse with the Athletic. Hey, hey um, getting your guys to play the relentless defense that they play. Um, I guess that if they don't do that, it's a non-starter, literally. Uh, but how do you, I mean, it sounds simple. Hey, go out there and play defense. How do you get guys to do that? Uh, we're on our second treadmill at our place. And, and 
you know, we don't have a chance to be successful. We don't have a chance. If, if you follow this program, I know you from here and you love basketball. You know, Brad Underwood couldn't have won two games in the NCAA tournament. If we're going to line up and be traditional, we have no chance to win a game. You know, but if we do something different, we have a chance. And for Centennial Tech averages 12 turnovers a game. If they, we force 12 turnovers tomorrow, we're not. It's going. To be, we're going to ride the bus back home again. You know, we have to do something different for us to have a chance to win, and for us to try to not let them catch, to to make them uncomfortable, and those kind of things. And it, you know, it's a credit to really our kids' parents allowing us to make them uncomfortable every day in practice. We got great parents. You know, our staff has recruited great kids who allow us to coach them, to not be entitled in this society and the generation today and allow us to make them uncomfortable every day to take them to another level. And I think we have nine starters. So they know if they don't do it the way we think we can be good at, then they'll, you know, I told them today, I said, hey, just put the shooting shirt on and cheerlead and, or go play the trumpet in the band tomorrow, whatever you want to do. But if you can't play it this way tomorrow, you know, we're, we're just be ready to go home with the band or the cheerleaders because you ain't playing tomorrow if you can't play the way we play. Josh Peter with USA Today. I um, subjected your players to a pop quiz, so I can't spur you. Um, uh oh, I was a terrible student. <laughs> what does the F in Stephen F. Austin stand for? Uh, well, golly, you know, I, I did my research before I got this job, and and I think it's Fuller. Is that right? So. You know, I was pretty blessed. I wanted to know everything about the school before I went in or the most I could. But the, I'm sure our guys, I, can, I can't imagine the dumb looks on their face um, that they said. I, I, you know, they could have thrown some stuff out there. I'd hate them. I, I don't even want to know what they said. Take again on the back, on this right side. Following up about the defense, do you have to recruit a certain kind of player that oh. you know will – like you said, not be entitled and be willing to be pushed maybe beyond limits? You, 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 as a coach, as you know this, we all think that we can change every kid. We all believe that. And I'm no different than most of them. But I, and, and I've tried. Some play, some don't, some leave. We've had a couple of leaves since I've been there. Uh, and I said this a week ago, the greatest talent you have, in my opinion, and I learned this from Coach Sutton, spending so much time with him and Sean, is, is your heart, your Valentine. And the last kid I signed won our game for us last Saturday is a kid named John Como, who his mother, when she asked me if I offered him a scholarship, she got down on her knees and cried last spring on, in, in her house. And, and I really kind of was a soft scholarship offer, if you can believe it. But I knew right then and there I had to have him because it meant so much for their family for them to come to Stephen F. Austin. And as we were kind of, we'd gotten tight and nervous. It was a game we had under control and everybody, but I knew he would give the energy to our team because he wasn't afraid and he cared so much about Stephen F. Austin. And he changed the game for us. And, but it's character and willingness and, and those kind of things. And, and it's deeper than, hey, how, how, how pretty is this shot? You know, those type of things I think that allow us to remotely have a chance to beat somebody else, you know, versus, hey, he's 6'8", 220, or, or fits all those things that maybe some of the kids I've coached in the past at our place. Don't get me wrong, I'll take a five-star kid, you know, and we'd like to have them. And if they want to come tomorrow, you know, for, for the spring, they can come on, we'll coach them too. But they got to be the right kind of kid. We consider ourselves gritty and grimy and, and that kind of stuff. Hey, Coach, Caleb with KTRE. Um, let me ask you first, how two-part question, how big was it on Sunday when you find out you're playing in Dallas? And secondly, have you got enough tickets now? <laughs> uh, Caleb, you know, was, and you know the story. I, I, back in December, the Lord told me we were going to play in Dallas. And, and the second thing is there is not enough tickets for all the people that want to come to this game for, that are involved in my life. For I need to get to this game. 
That's for sure. At least I'm responsible to get them tickets. Um, but I'm sure Coach Beard and their families and the players that are involved with Texas Tech have the same problem that I do, which I think is great. You know, I, I think it's wonderful, and I'm blessed that so many people want to come to this game tomorrow, um, especially for me for my first time. I'm so lucky that people want to come to, to watch us play and, and will be a, has been a part of my life, and I get to play in Dallas. <laughs> it's a storybook, but, you know, I've been led everywhere, and, and um, you know, it, it's no shock. You know, trust me, it's no shock that we're here. Anything else for Coach? No hands? All right, Coach, we'll let you know. Prepare for practice. Tell Beard he's lucky I didn't start telling all the stories about him. <laughs> Thank you, Coach.